Hey guys, Vladimir here. So today I've got a bit of a different video for you and there's a question I wanted to answer. On a few occasions I've been asked how is it that when I orbit my models in Fusion 360 that they look so smooth? And the short answer has to do with uh, one of these contraptions here. So these are the 3D Connection Space Mouses, uh, Space Mice. Mm. Basically, the, the magic behind these is that you have this uh, wheel here that replaces your the um, scroll wheel on your mouse and the shift key. So you can do uh, pan, orbit, zoom, all with just this wheel here. So like I said, it's made by a company called 3D Connection. The two models I'll be showing you today are the Space Mouse Wireless, which uh, at the time of this recording sells for $169, and the Space Mouse Wireless Pro, which goes for $329. I'll leave links to these down below. A few years ago when I first heard about it, I bought this one here, the, the little guy. And then a couple months ago, 3D Connection reached out and they said, uh, or they offered to send me a, a Space Mouse for me to try. And since I already had this one, I asked that they would send me the big brother here, the Space Mouse Pro. And they did. So I brought this up in my Fusion 360 live class, uh, my weekly online class that I do. And I wanted to get um, just a survey of how many students were actually using these. Um, I think I only had like one out of 20 students had, uh, had one. Um, but there was a lot of curiosity. Um, the students wanted to know, you know, should they be getting one? Uh, is it worth it? Like, what's the purpose? Um, so there was enough interest that I thought, you know what, let me do a video and I can show you how I use this. And then that way, if you have any questions, um, you know, you may be curious as to how it works with Fusion 360, uh, whether you uh, should get one, uh, maybe you've been debating it. Um, but yeah, so let me just, I'll show you how I use it and what I think of it, and then maybe it'll put you in a better place to make a decision. But first, let's let's back up a little bit and ask, like, why? <laughs> like, like, you may be asking, hey, I've got a perfectly capable you know uh, 15 20 dollar mouse and the keyboard shift button works perfectly fine for zooming scrolling and orbiting um so it sounds like you're just paying for something that's going to allow you to do something that you can already do and you're perfectly right you'd be absolutely right if you're uh, just if you're thinking that um so why don't we just hop into fusion 360 really quick and i'll try to show you what the difference looks like Okay, so I've got an old design here. This is a sculpture I was working on. Before I demo the Space Mouse, just a quick word from, well, me. If you're looking to get up and running with Fusion 360, you'll wanna check out my quick start course down below. It'll be the most efficient, quickest, and easiest to follow, and actually very enjoyable way to get up and running and creating your own models with Fusion 360. The link to the course is down below. All right, back to the Space Mouse. and. Let's say, for example, here, I'm gonna to go to home view and I wanna, I'm gonna remove, let me see, like this panel here. And let's say I just want to, here I'm at this home view, I wanna be able to inspect uh, inside here to look at one of these brackets. So I have to orbit around and inside to see it. And then I wanna to come to the bottom and check out the bottom of the base here. So the normal way with just the mouse and keyboard I'm gonna click my, um, you know, my middle mouse button and shift to just kind of orbit. And I'm gonna kind of orbit till I get to a view I want. And then maybe I'll scroll wheel to zoom in and then I'll pan to adjust and then kind of zoom in. And so there I am, you know, I'm maybe do some slight adjustments here um, to pan. And then, okay, now I see what I want there and now I'm gonna zoom out and then I'm gonna orbit to the bottom and then I'm gonna zoom in, and then I'm gonna pan, and then zoom, and then you're kind of always doing this like panning, orbing, zooming, um, all these little micro adjustments to get there to what, what you wanna see. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's not, you know, not incredibly hard, it's fine. Um, but let's just look at now how that looks by using the uh, space mouse. So let me just click here to go to home view, and now I'm gonna grab my space mouse, and so the way this would work is I would just kind of orbit and then zoom right in. And here I am. So now I can, you know, you can see how smooth that is. I'm not doing these the, like panning, orbiting, panning, zooming, panning. It's just, it's very smooth. And now I want to go here to the bottom. I'm just going to zoom out, come right in. 
here I am right there to look at that bracket. And then, so yeah, you see how obviously that's just a much cleaner, much, um, just a nice, a nice flow there. And then a really nice feature here is if I kind of go back out, you know, again, like orbiting, you'll see me kind of do this, just like rotating a model. Um, I'm gonna go from like a bottom or top to a bottom view. But you also have these buttons here, which makes that incredibly um, useful. So, you know, instead of having to come up here to your view cube and click on top, you know, and then kind of lining it up into place and maybe you can use these arrows to move it and then you can, you know, do this to um, look at the different views. But with the Space Miles Pro, the buttons are already there. So I can just right away click on top, go to a front, go to a right view here. And then there's a button to just kind of orbit and move to the right. Let me go to a different design here. This is my uh, Apple Watch little charging stand I had made. Um, so again, just kind of can move it around very easy, very smoothly to come in here, maybe inspect some of those joints. And again, if you want to go to a top view, just click the button right there and it just it positions it perfectly. Um, front view, right view, and then you can kind of just move it around to see each side. So yeah, I mean, you see the difference here. Another part where I think this really shines, um, and I've gotten to, um, I haven't experimented too much with it yet, but I can already see is within the uh, forms environment here. Um, because when you're in the form, so you're doing a lot of like, you know, just tweaking and just, you know, you're sculpting the model. So um, really quick, let, let me see, I'll just click here. And again, I have my shift key right on the space mouse. So I can just go ahead and grab that to select both of these, right click, go to edit form. And then, so here's something where you, you can, you know, manipulate these and then you're always kind of like looking and turning it to see how it's behaving. Um, and, and the really nice thing there is that uh, um, alt button. And since I'm on a Mac, I programmed that to be the option button because then when I go ahead and extrude a new face, I just have that right there. And I can go ahead and create a new face. Again, just orbit, look at it. Maybe I wanna scale that up, you know, and maybe create another new face here, you know. So um, again, if I deselect, shift button is right there. Hold it, bring that up. And just kind of so you, you're you're creating these new faces and you're being able to just kind of you know like move the object around without without like moving your hands anywhere your hands are all um, in one place and then so you know I don't really have anything in mind here but if I was just doing I, mean, I don't know something crazy here I can just kind of come in you know and just continue making faces here and sculpting what I need um, and then the nice thing about that is um, the undo button that I program so you know you can you know like something just that undo button is right there just undo it so yeah I didn't really have anything planned in mind. I just wanted to kind of show you here um, how I think in the sculpting environment if you are using that that um, really a whole other added benefit for the space mouse here um, so okay just the, uh, I wanted to do just a quick little demo to show you the differences of how it looks um, by using the space mouse versus just using your normal um, keyboard and uh, regular mouse. The other big benefit, and this is really just applicable to the pro version, is that you get 15 programmable buttons. And the reason why I think if you're gonna get one honestly, um, and you, you, know, you can't afford the big one, I would say go for it. Because I'll show you kind of the difference here. When you're um, using the, the small one, it, it's got two programmable buttons, but like, so the setup would look something like this. Um, you get the benefit, like the, this wheel is exactly the same in both. You got that six uh, degrees of freedom sensor, so you can, you know, do all the nice smooth orbiting. But the problem is um, you end up having to go back and forth, right? Like it, for your keyboard shortcut. So you're modeling, you turn it, you know, E for extrude and T for trim. You're, 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 you're having to do that. Um, and you, I mean, you've got two programmable buttons, but that's it. With the 15 um, buttons here, now you basically can, you know, you don't, you don't completely, you know, disregard the keyboard, but you're not going back and forth as much now. You know, you've, you've got the ability to really, like this becomes your command center, you know, and, and you're orbiting and you've got 
all your shortcuts right here programmed just the way you like it, you know, exactly how you want to use Fusion. Um, and it just makes for a more flow, <laughs> I guess is the right word. Like you get into that design flow and you could really do that with the option to program the buttons here. Um, then I find that the only reason then I really need the keyboard for is just for my dimensions, right? You want that number pad here. So this is really sort of my, you know, home position. And then I'm just using this to enter dimensions and you know, it's the keyboard. So I don't really have to look, I'm just kind of go, you know, typing them in and then, you know, I've got this to just control everything here on the left. So this workflow I find works really well, you know, because otherwise, even though you may be quick with your shortcuts, just that sort of split second that you have to kind of look away, find the key, press it, you know, and it's, you know, you're looking down and up. It, it just, it's, it, it creates friction there while you're just trying to focus on your model and, and designing. Um, so that's that. That's the huge benefit with this one is the programmable buttons. Okay, let's focus on this little guy for a minute. So the first thing you're going to notice right away when you pick it up is this thing is heavy. It is dense. It's pretty much a pound in this little package right here. Um, so heavy and it, like it doesn't feel like a toy, right? It isn't just some plastic toy. It, it, is, um, it is solid. But the beautiful thing about that is when you put it on your desk, it's not going to slide around. It is anchored in there, so you can move and twist this, and it's it's going to stay put. So, you know, I, that was one of the things that impressed me right away um, about it. So you don't get all the buttons you get on the Pro. You get two programmable buttons, um, you know, but the trade-off is, uh, you know, I guess it's smaller, so it's more portable. Um, although it is a pound, right? Like if you're I'm not going to throw this in my bag and if I'm going to be like traveling or walking all day. I mean, you're going to feel that after a while. Um, but if you, I guess you, you want to throw in your bag because you want to go somewhere else to do some design work and you're going to be there for a while, then I guess that's fine. Um, but yeah, so you've got your, you know, your pros and cons there. Both of these um, are wireless, um, so you can, you know, use it wireless or plug it in. But it isn't uh, Bluetooth. It's the 2.4 gigahertz wireless technology, so you have the little uh, USB plug that you have to plug in. Um, which, if, I guess if you're in a desktop situation and you've got plenty of USB ports, it's not an issue. But it is unfortunate that you now have to sacrifice one of your USB ports um, in order to use it. Not sure why they didn't just go with Bluetooth. Uh, I looked at the website and they talk about um, the reliability of, I guess, that technology and giving you the same, you know, um, reliability as it's as wired option. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I've got a Bluetooth mouse and it's pretty reliable. So maybe we'll see that in a future update, um, but it would be nice to use it without having to, you know, sacrifice a USB port. And so for that reason, I tend to, um, when I have it on my desk, I actually, I just have it uh, plugged in. Um, that way I don't have to worry about, you know, the battery running out. Although it's really not an issue because the battery on these things, um, this one's got one month life, uh, a battery life, and this one has two months. And that's based off of, if you look on the website, um, you know, five days of use for eight hours a day. Um, so yeah, but great battery life on them. Okay, so that's the regular wireless mouse. Now let's look at the um, layout of the Pro. So on the top row here, you've got your four programmable buttons. Actually, they're all programmable. It's just that um, these other ones are labeled and they have sort of specific uses, uh, but you can change them. So on the left side, you're seeing you've got your escape key. Uh, very useful because I use the escape key a lot in Fusion 360. Your control, shift, alt. Uh, if you're using a Mac, you can reprogram this to be your option key. A menu key here. And here you've got a rotate left. Uh, you've got a top view, front view, right view, and a lock orbit, and then a fit button here, which uh, will fit your design right to the screen. Um, I ended up changing these. For example, on the, the fit button, I made it my project tool. So when you're sketching, you want to project the line. I use that for that. And then um, the menu button, I don't see myself using the menu a lot, so I just made this my undo button. You'll probably find, just like I did, that you'll program the buttons and then 
um, as you use it, you'll realize, okay, you know, I'm using this tool a lot more. It makes more sense to program that one. So um, you probably won't get it right in your first uh, iteration of, of trying to figure out a good workflow, um, but it's good just to jump in and start using it, program them to how you think you're gonna need it. And then, you know, you can just uh, update it. It's really easy to change the buttons to program them. All you do is you open up the app right here and you just go to your buttons tab and you can easily assign the buttons. All right, that's my review on the 3D connection mouse. So I showed the little guy here, um, you know, small, but very capable. And then you've got your pro option here, which you do have the 15 programmable buttons, which, um, you know, I recommend this one, honestly, if you're a serious CAD user. Um, all right, so what, what do I think of this? Um, is it worth it? Um, so here's the thing. If you're someone who's using Fusion 360 daily, you know, then yes. If you're hopping on daily, you're using it even like, you know, multiple times a, uh, a week, um, I'd say yes, it, it would be worth it. Um, but if you're just a hobbyist who's happened on like once a week or so to design, it's probably not going to be worth it. Um, especially because you have to invest the time to get comfortable with it and if you're just only you know using it once a week you're just never going to get there right you're probably each time it's going to be like you're, you're learning it <laughs> from fresh you know starting over um so you do have to put in the time to really get comfortable um i actually have a little like tape on my monitor telling me what the program buttons are um just you know so i can get used to it and forcing my brain to to actually use it instead of going uh, with the keyboard because in the beginning it's that's going to be the easier way is what i know which is the keyboard but if you just kind of force yourself to use it you'll eventually get to that you know that design flow where uh, it is going to be a lot less friction and just you're going to feel much more in control um, when you when you actually um, get the hang of it so yeah at the end of the day it just all depends on how much you're using it and whether it's going to be uh, worth it for you uh, because you do have to put that initial time in to get used to it you know it is learning a new tool so there's quite a bit of like muscle memory that you're going to have to uh, put the time in to develop but after you've gone through that process, I would say, yes, it's, it's definitely worth it. So what's my overall opinion? I gotta say, I, I love this thing. And it's, and it's definitely after you get used to it because now, so my usual setup is, is this here on my iMac. So normally I'm designing on my desktop computer here and I just have this plugged in and it stays put. Um, but I also have uh, Fusion installed on my uh, laptop, my Dell XPS 15. And so I'll take that with me and go somewhere and then open up Fusion. And then I always like, I, I reach for the space mouse and it's not there. And then there's, there's a little bit of annoyance when I realize uh, like annoyance and disappointment that it's not there that I have to now go back to you know using the keyboard so and it just and it feels clunky um doing it that way now instead of having the space mouse so that's how i kind of know like you know i, I really enjoy using it and it, it just it kind of feels more at home now than when i'm um like this using fusion than using the keyboard so in summary yes if you're using fusion 360 enough uh it's definitely worth it if you're just the occasional user probably not all right, I hope this has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you have or had a Space Mouse before, I'd love to hear your experience. What did you think of it? Um, is it something you loved or did you try and just wasn't for you? Uh, let us know in the comments below. All right, guys, I will see you soon.